Um, hi, folks. This is Joe Firestone for Real Progressives, talking to you in the middle of the day, not a customary time for me. Uh, and what I want to talk about uh, but today is take care of our own, uh, damn it. Uh, following the Puerto Rican crisis and the crisis in um, St. Croix, uh, uh, there have been um, quite a number okay, of articles okay, and videos um, um, urging Congress and the president you know, to get with it and to take care of our citizens. Uh, Jeff Spross of the Week, um, for example, writes, over the long term, um, Puerto Rico should be made a U.S. state, but in the short term, the federal government needs to step in and spend the money necessary to rebuild the island. Obviously, this would include a complete uh, revamp of its grid and power sector. Staffing across the public sector needs to be rebuilt. Then there's the repair of roads, buildings, food, aid, uh, also medicine, repair of water systems, and more. It's way too soon to know how much it would cost. But if rebuilding... Uh, um, Houston, a city of over 5 million, will cost $200 billion after Hurricane uh, Harvey. We can probably assume Puerto Rico will be in that neighborhood or maybe a bit less. For context, $200 billion is less than 6% of one year of total federal spending. I don't know why that's relevant. Uh, the 200 billion is less than what? Uh, roughly one and a half percent of GDP, or something like that, off the top of my head. Uh, and a second article um, in the Nation reads, or um, is entitled, uh, "Puerto Rico needs massive emergency now and an end to um, austerity." Quote, Puerto Rico has been hit by the double whammy of irresponsible policy driven by a lust for profit. The reckless, specul the reckless speculation in bonds ignored not only the fact that its economy was failing, but that the island itself was vulnerable to extreme weather events resulting from climate change caused by the irrational addiction to fossil fuels. Um, uh, Hurricane Maria is the third category for, for storm to hit the U.S. territory in a month. Uh, a record in modern meteorological history. And Maria's terrible blow reveals how Puerto Rico could be the mirror for a dystopian American future. As a recent report by the Action Center on Race and Economy suggests, the hardline austerity plan for Puerto Rico is a vision of the strictures already imposed in Detroit's bankruptcy and will likely be used for, uh, for troubled uh, municipalities like Chicago and states like um, Illinois. On the other hand, Puerto Rico's uh, 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 misery can be a wake-up call for the United States, which ever since the New York City fiscal crisis of the 1970s has gradually abandoned its commitment to the common good, um, 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 terminating um, the PROMISA, which is some legislation passed by Congress um, for the island that's terribly uh, uh, exploitive, and investing billions in infrastructure, health, and um, education, humanely assuming responsibility for over a century of um, uh, colonialism, will not only save tens of thousands of lives, it can also set a precedent and help reverse the slow descent of Trump's America into political, uh, economic, and social disaster. And our own Steve Grumbine points out that Puerto Rican and St. Croix relief should not even be in question. They are part of the U.S. Their residents are American citizens. 
All of our residents and citizens are entitled to prompt and full disaster relief, as are the Americans uh, living in uh, um, Houston and in other areas hard hit by Hurricane Harvey. Well, of course, um, 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 it's very good to say these things and to point out that relief should not even be in question. But Congress has to appropriate the money for relief. They also have to help the ravaged by hedge funds Puerto Rican economy, which they have refused to help for years while Puerto Rico was being slowly looted by neoliberal savages. How we will get them to do it? Uh, it is not enough to tell Congress that we know that taxes don't fund spending, or even that we know that Congress can order the Fed to place the estimated funds needed for relief and recovery directly into the Treasury spending account. Somebody needs to give Congress a push that they cannot ignore. Uh, it has to be a push that will make them a laughing stock if they do not come up with the needed appropriations. That push can be provided by Donald J. Trump, the current president of the United States. It can be given through a dramatic action by the president followed by a dramatic speech urging Congress uh, to action. Here's the dramatic action. Donald Trump needs to order the Secretary of the Treasury to have the U.S. Mint create a one-ounce proof platinum coin with a face value of $100 trillion, take it to the New York Fed, and then deposit the coin into the Mint's um, public enterprise um, a fund account. The Fed will then take that coin into its vault forever and credit the PEF with the hundred trillion dollar face value in the form of reserves created by the Fed. And here's what this speech needs to say to Congress. Using the authority Given the Secretary of the Treasury in the platinum coin provision of the legislation Congress passed in 1996, I have ordered the Secretary to have the Mint create a platinum coin with a face value of $100 trillion. I've done this because I can no longer sit by while Congress wrings his hand, its hands over a big lie, namely that your government is running out of money. Uh, the U.S. government cannot run out of money because the founders of this nation, in their wisdom, gave Congress the exclusive power to coin federal money with no limits on that uh, um, uh, power. Now, Congress has delegated uh, that power to two executive um um, agencies within that government, okay, within our government, the Treasury Department uh, and the Federal Reserve. Okay. Congress can, if it wishes, order the New York Fed to fill the Treasury spending account with all the reserves necessary to pass its appropriations. If they did that, uh, then the platinum coin would not have been needed. However, Congress doesn't do this kind of thing. Instead, it prefers to have Treasury ask to fill its spending account with reserves according to certain procedures that have become customary and that amount to providing the Fed with a message it can use to trigger its authority to create reserves in the Treasury's account. Rather than trying to persuade Congress to just order the Fed to place funds in Treasury's account, I have decided, in view of the multiple crises recently caused by uh, Hurricanes Harvey and Maria, and the, likely, uh, the likelihood of more natural disasters in the future, and the need for quick and decisive action when these crises occur, 
to just order the secretary to use the authority given to him in the 1996 law to fill the men's PEF account with enough reserves to cover the cost of recovery for natural disasters for many years to come. This action makes Congress's job um, easier when a natural disaster occurs. And incidentally, also, when we have a debt ceiling or a budgetary crisis or any other fiscal crisis besetting us. Because with the money necessary to handle the crisis um, um, in the public purse, uh, um, already all Congress will have to worry about is what it should do about the crisis. It won't have to worry about its debt ceiling. It won't have to worry about uh, running out of money or about the need for um, austerity or about having the money necessary to repay the national debt because it thinks there's no money in the Treasury. So without these worries, all that will be left for Congress to do is to meet its continuing obligation to pass laws for the public purpose, such as a law providing the appropriations I need to use the full power of the United States government to take care of our own in Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, um, Houston, and any other cities, states, territories, and other possessions of the United States where American citizens live and work. So now, I'll close by saying Congress get to work to pass the legislation I need today without delay. <coughs> um, it's an emergency. Uh, act like it. I know you can do it. Have it on my desk tomorrow. I will sign it, and we will take care of our own um, um, everywhere. That, my friends, is what Donald Trump should be doing. That, my friends, is what um, uh, Donald Trump should be saying. He should not be moving on to the tax reform bill now. He should not be presenting his tax plan. He should not be distracting attention from the disasters and our thus far inadequate response to them. <clears throat> he should be stepping up as the President of the United States to his duty to lead us in legislating for public purpose and in implementing the mandated laws of the Congress. He should be stepping up to fill the public purse so there will be no longer um, any excuse for Congress to avoid doing its duty to legislate for us for we the people, for our benefit, and for the benefit of the United States of America. Well, that's it for today, folks. Okay, at least until 10 p.m. tonight, when I will be interviewing David Strider. And about um, David Strider, an independent candidate for president in the state of Washington, I want to assure you that He's not one of them. He's one of ours. Thank you very much for now, and I'll see you at 10 p.m. tonight.